Okay. Hello. We are talking today with great people and having exceptional conversations. And today I have Lillian Sue, who is a PR extraordinaire. So excited. We've known each other for quite a while and we've supported each other in our business endeavors. And Lillian is not only exceptional at her job, but she has written a book and is doing some PR. So Lillian, introduce yourself and let us know who are you doing PR for? Sure. Yeah. I am a PR coach and publicist and I work at empowering creative entrepreneurs, authors, filmmakers, small businesses to push past limiting beliefs in order to gain the confidence to learn how to build a successful PR campaign for themselves. So what do when I say I work with them to push past limiting beliefs? In the course of my business, I originally started out doing more social media, and copywriting. And even as a publicist, I noticed quite a few of my clients having a lot of the same mindset blocks of fear, anxiety, frustration, uh, imposter syndrome, and a lot of unrealistic expectations surrounding what marketing is, what PR is, what it could do for them. And the amount of work that they would have to put into it themselves in order to be successful. And because I started noticing a lot of those patterns with my clients, with clients that I worked with through agencies I worked with, and I had a lot of entrepreneurs coming to me and saying, Hey, I would love to hire you for a campaign, but I can't afford it. So I thought, there has to be a better way for me to continue to work with these fantastic people, but also impart my knowledge, my expertise, my experience onto them so that not only are they making better choices for themselves and for their businesses in relation to what type of PR strategy they want, what their goals are, who they want to get in front of in terms of audiences, when they work with a PR firm or an agency, they also have more confidence to actually advocate with, for themselves. Because a lot of the other thing I was seeing was a lot of folks who were doing the PR campaigns with agencies coming out the other side and going, yeah, I got results, but they weren't the results that I wanted because I didn't feel comfortable or confident enough to speak up on what I wanted. And I believe that because the agency was the expert, I could just follow their lead. So my business, the bedrock of my business is built, whether clients come to me for coaching and that's one-on-one sessions or a full-on eight-week coaching program, or they come to me for campaigns, which I usually do two months or four months, or it's a combination of both. The bedrock of my business is really focused on providing my clients that personalized guidance, support, and clarity on what their goals are, what their story is, how to build a strategy, and most importantly, what are the mindset blocks that come up for them in relation to marketing and PR, and how can we build healthy coping mechanisms to help them move past it. So who does PR? In terms of what businesses need PR? Yeah, what businesses, what people are you, are coming to you with these issues and problems and wants? PR is a discipline that anybody can incorporate into their marketing strategy. And PIP, I would argue everybody should incorporate into their marketing strategy. Every Except entrepreneur, for five-year-olds. Yeah, but like every entrepreneur, every small business, every brand, because everybody has a story that deserves to be told. And it's that story that's going to make you stand out to audiences and make them learn how to trust you. Because it's not enough for you to just say, hey, I'm, I run a software company, or hey, I run a candle making business, or hey, I run a tourism attraction. Okay, so what? 
what makes you different from everybody else out there that's doing the same thing, especially in your local region. Oh, so that's it's funny. Yeah, like it's it, these types of people that are coming to me for PR, your authors, your filmmakers, your small business people mm. who have a who want to do something different to stand out and to get their story out there. And the power of PR really comes down to getting introspective on what your story is, why it matters, what is, what's your journey been, and then building relationships with the media, the podcast, the writers, the bloggers, the YouTube hosts, all of those guys who are actually going to get you in front of those, the right audiences who are your readers, your customers, your clients. Isn't that interesting? When I was at the paper, so my experience with mm -hmm. PR, and you made a lot of sense when you said what you said a moment ago, but when I was at the newspaper, we would get faxes and that was PR. People mm -hmm. telling us about their businesses because they wanted us to write about them in the paper. Now I was in the advertising area of the newspaper. So I would look at the faxes and I would say, what makes you different? Or they would call up on the phone mm -hmm. and they'd be like, I want a story written about me. And you'd ask what makes you different? And they'd be like, I opened a restaurant. We're like, okay, and? Unless it's a restaurant section. So that's my experience with PR. And it sounds like PR has grown tremendously from the time that I was at the paper to now, because there's so, I, when I was at the paper, 2010. So 12 years ago and, oh wait, 10. Okay, 13, maybe 13 years ago. <laughs> but so it's different. And, but the same things are really important, which are, what makes your story important or what makes your story talkable, talkable, chattable, or like describable. And when these businesses come to you, you sit and work with them and you figure out their story with them. Is that what you do? In part, it's a huge part of it because everyone knows what their story is, right? But the caveat is which parts are you comfortable sharing? And if you're not comfortable sharing, why is that? What are the limiting beliefs and the blocks that are preventing you from moving forward? If you feel a lot of fear, what's the root of that fear? Let's dig deep a little bit and Ooh, figure out what's personal. actually, yeah, triggering that to help you push past it, right? Because if there's one thing I've learned is that if you are trying to get out there and you're trying to build a marketing strategy and get talking to people and you're operating from a place of fear or you're so anxious about it because you're afraid you're going to lose control. What happens is you can end up sabotaging your own strategy. You end up, Oh, my, my one email didn't get a response. Therefore, this isn't going to work. I'm just going to turf this whole thing. I'm not going to move forward, which can happen a lot. But what I try to do with my clients is really figuring out, you know what your story is. What are the parts that you're comfortable sharing? If you're not comfortable sharing, let's get into why and help you build coping mechanisms to push past that. So if you feel stressed out over a lack of response, that doesn't mean you'll never feel stressed out again. But what I try to coach my clients to do is that the next time you feel that way, here are the tools and resources you can use to allow yourself to not be stuck in that position, to not dwell on it. So that, that's why mindset is a big part of what it is that I do with my clients. And then once they have that mindset piece, then it's about figuring out goal planning. Pip, I've spoken to so many entrepreneurs who are like, I want more sales. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's great. Everybody wants more sales. I get that. Here's the problem though. It's not specific enough. Mm, so when I say to not. my, right. So when I say to my clients and we sit down with each other, I'm like, I need you to get specific, lay out a calendar and start planning out in three months, in six months and a year. If you want more sales, what are the different ways you can show up to get in front of your readers, your viewers, your clients, your customers, right? Mm -hmm. What are we doing for business development? What are we doing for distribution? 
what are we doing for media in terms of sharing your story? And in some cases, what are the opportunities that we can take advantage of that will do multiple things out of those categories? Do you want to do events? Like, what does that look like? Are we, are you presenting a workshop? If you're presenting a workshop, how many conferences do you want to apply to that will give you that opportunity in that conference opportunity? Will you also be selling your products? Will you have a table? What does all of that look like? How are we going to get attention on the fact that you're doing this event? Where, who are the people that you want to get in front of? You want to hit podcasts? Let's try podcasts. You want to try YouTube shows? Let's try YouTube shows. Radio, there's that option too. So I really work with my clients to get super specific on what it is that they want to do and who they want to get in front of. On the coaching side, the difference there is I guide them through it and then I give them the resources to do it on their own. And then when they get stuck, they can always come back to me and we can book a call and I can coach them through it. On the campaign side, I'm a, a lot more hands-on. So I work with them on actually building the different pieces to send out to the media kit, the media pitches. I build out a media list and then I ask them, I need your input to make sure we're positioning you and your business the right way. So if there's photos you want me to use, tell me that. If there's certain people you want me to connect with on the media list, add them on there. So both relationships are very much collaborative, but in different ways, depending on what my clients are looking for. And what do they want the outcome to be oftentimes? I know that's a very blanket statement, but if I sign up to do PR, what can I, what can I expect as a return? It depends on what their goals are, right? If you want to, there's a ton of different ways to measure results from a campaign. Things like what does your website traffic look like? What are you, what are your email subscribers look like? What do your social media followers look like? And ultimately how many customers are booking calls with you after having heard you on a number of different podcasts? Or maybe they've met you at an event and they want to continue that relationship by booking meetings or booking calls to actually employ your services, right? So there's several different outcomes on how you can measure the results of a PR campaign, but it's very rarely I'm going to do this one thing and then this result, it's going to have a direct result. It's more a correlation rather than a causation. And in order to get that, what I'm always saying to my clients and to the entrepreneurs in my audience, it comes down to consistency. So you can't expect big returns off of one interview. That's fair. That is very fair. It's one ad, right? Repetition is key in whatever form it takes with marketing. The other thing is putting yourself out there. I think it sounds like that's what you help people do and get over the hurdles that are blocking them. I know I have some hurdles with video content, and I know some of the people I've worked with have the very same or different issues that actually become a stopping point to you not getting out there. And if you don't put yourself out there in the digital space, in specifically is what I think, then you don't get seen. And if you don't get seen, how can mm -hmm. you get clients, right? Or how can you make sure you people know you're the expert? And so I find that very interesting. And so you're not only doing digital, though, are your media kits digital and for other things? I'm like, is there other things besides digital? <laughs> the media kits things. are primarily digital. And usually when I counsel my clients, like it, it depends on what their needs are. But I usually counsel them if they want to bring in a copy of the media kit with them, do the USB drive, send the links beforehand. You want to minimize the amount of work that you have to print things out and things like that. It depends on the, if they're doing events too, it depends on the type of event because for my author clients that are doing book signings, then I'd encourage little freebies and merch and things like that to 
really build the rapport with the readers and the audiences that are coming to them for book signings and things like that. So it depends on the event, but usually I counsel them to keep the media kits primarily digital just to keep costs down and to make it more easily accessible. But when it comes to media opportunities, again, depends on the client's needs, but I don't ever say no if somebody says, I'd like to try TV or I'd like to try radio or I'd like to try in-person things. I would never say no. It just comes back to, does it align with what your goals are and the audiences that you're trying to get in front of? That's so interesting. And so it sounds like you work with a lot of book writers. Yeah, authors are a pretty big part of my client base, but I also, I've worked with food brands. I've worked with tech startups. I've worked with tourism and hospitality, like attractions and companies and things like that. Mm, So, and and also, yeah. And also. And food events and stuff too. I have a lot of fun helping to get PR out there to help sell tickets for food events and things like that too. It's all about like the different sectors that I'm passionate about and also in just helping the right people get out there because my biggest philosophy is that I believe everybody is capable of fulfilling their fullest potential. I like that. What we often have trouble with though is trying to figure out how to get out of our own way. Often the and, problem. Often. And really hard because you have to stick to it. So if I was going to hire a PR company, you said you do an eight week kind of course or do I sign up for an eight week campaign? How does like, Paint me a picture of what it looks like to work with a PR agency. Again, this is why we do discovery calls beforehand, because it really depends on the client's needs. It depends on their budget. It depends on things like if you're doing a campaign, are we, do you have a timeline? Uh, Do you want to go local? Do you want to go national? Do you want to go international? How deep are we going? in terms of the different types of media are we also managing events all of these different facets will factor in to how long the campaign is going to be what the budget is and also you know how much leg work needs to be done because i have clients that have come to me who have media kits already done and we just have to do a little bit of minor finessing and everything and we can get started on the campaign pretty quickly. I have other clients who come to me with nothing's really completed on their end. They have ideas, but there's a lot of things they're unsure of. So there's a lot of that sort of thing that will take a lot longer. I spoke to an author recently who wanted kind of approximate timelines on how long it would take to say, do up a media kit. And I said, a lot of that comes down to your mindset. If you have issues with things like getting your photo taken, it's probably going to take you a lot longer to put something together than somebody who has some really strong ideas of how they want to be visually represented and can just go ahead and do it, right? So it's really individualistic depending on the clients and what their needs are. But I usually start off with two months being the shortest for a campaign because the first month is really just even you spend a couple weeks literally getting all of the pieces together really nailing down what do you have for your media kit what are we still waiting on what are we writing for a media pitch to send out to them and then on top of that when it comes to a media list who do you want to get in front of is there do i have all of those contacts in that area or am i doing a lot of external research based on what your needs are, right? So really, I don't go shorter than two months just because there's a lot of prep time leading up to actually doing the media relations piece where I'm connecting with podcasters and other media outlets to schedule interviews, schedule events, whatever it is that we're doing. So that's a bit of an overview on how campaigns work. Usually, if a client wants to go bigger, So national, international, in corporate events, then we're looking at four to six months to really make an impact Mm -hmm. with scheduling 
the interviews, with scheduling the events, with really taking our time to build up that media interest in their story. On the coaching side, that the one-on-one solo sessions that I have are the flexible ones. Those get scheduled based on a client's schedule and they come to me for specific issues for that hour. It's, hey, I'm stuck on putting together a media kit. Can you look over it for me? Or I've sent out a media pitch. I'm not getting responses. What's going on? Can we have a chat about it? And that's with each one of those calls, I record it. I give them tools and resources at the end of it so that they know how to continue moving forward. The eight, right. So the eight week program is much more structured. It's one coaching call a week and we go through everything from what's your story all the way to, okay, now you have an interview go live what can we do to promote it? Right. So each week is on a different topic that I'm coaching them on and giving them tools and resources on. And occasionally like the program has some flexibility in terms of exactly what we cover, because I've had coaching clients who need help with their social media strategy too. Cause I've had clients that are like, I'm launching a program for the first time in my life, never done it before. I have no idea how to develop a social media content strategy around it. Can we devote a week to that too? And I'm, and I say, Hey, that absolutely, because this is part of the guidance and the support and the coaching that I'm giving you. So it's really individualistic on both ends of the spectrum, depending on what a client's needs are. That makes a lot of sense. And it it sounds you I love that you help people, you do it for them. And then you can, you'll also teach them. We, that's one of our philosophies, right? Cause we've run across the same thing. Lots of business owners who can't afford to work with us. And so how do we help them? Because you always want to help them do better, get more clients and learn how to use the digital space to their advantage because it's, some people get really overwhelmed with it. And so if we can make it easier, it's better and more fun. It sounds like you mm-hmm. love what you do. It's great. For me, the biggest wins are when a client has a light bulb moment and actually understands the strategy and the mechanisms of how to do things. That's a really big win for me. And then the other win is when they get that coverage that we've been gunning for and we've been preparing for and strategizing for. And that to me is something that's always worth celebrating because they're getting their story out there. They're getting noticed. And they're building their reputations as experts in their field, which is what you want in order to have, you know, their audiences trust them. And do you see an influx in people like influencers doing PR? I see a lot more influencers being on the media side of it, which is interesting because what I've noticed as time has gone on particularly with like certain sectors like food, for example, vegan food in particular, Mm -hmm. there are a lot of reviewers and bloggers that have become influencers. And what I've noticed in incorporating that as part of any PR campaign is that you often have to be really stringent with your budgets where that's concerned, because for a lot of the folks that have larger audiences, you can expect to pay them more to do reviews, to do Instagram takeovers, to share a video featuring client products and things like that. So in that way, it's almost less of an earned media strategy, which you typically don't have to pay for and more of a paid media strategy, incorporating it more into advertising and sponsored posts and things like that too. So it's interesting to see that area continue to grow because there's definitely some great folks out there that really provide some fantastic added value to client events and for their products and things like that. But you do have to be really careful when you're doing researching for that sort of thing because budgets can really balloon if you're not careful. Uh, Yes. And you make a really good point that I think we should point out because it, it is the difference between, so when I was in the newspaper, you have 
the articles. And then I'm on the advertising, you have the ads. And PR is about organic. Like, it's similar to getting an article written about. It is exactly getting an article written about you versus taking out an ad. For the most part, I seem to think, am I wrong in that? I don't think I am, but I could be. Definitely earned media is a huge part of PR, and it still continues to exist today, even though, as I'm sure since we both have newsroom experience, how much the media landscape has shrunk, particularly in Canada, where there's a lot of buyouts, there's a lot of early retirements, there's a lot of budget cuts and everything else. With earned media, a lot of times you are trying to get the attention of newsrooms, reporters, media personalities who have much larger workloads and a lot less resources than they used to 10, 15 years ago. But earned media is still a huge part of a PR strategy. It's just shifted in a lot of ways from newspapers and broadcasts to podcasts Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of experts in different fields running their own podcasts. And there's also former journalists running their own podcasts now as well. That is still considered a form of earned media. There's other forms of PR as well, which we won't have time to get into the nitty gritty of all of them, but paid media is another way to develop a strategy in partnership with earned media, but organic is still the most powerful because this reporter, this podcaster, this writer is choosing to share your story. So they believe in your story and what it is that you're trying to do. And that kind of relationship is not something you can pay for. It's something that you build over time that is also reflected in how their audiences learn to trust you. It's authenticity, it's honesty, and it's really about doing that work to develop those relationships. Yeah, that's quite interesting. It's amazing how digital space has really changed things. I have a writer I work with and she wrote a book, sorry, She's not a writer. I guess she is a writer because she wrote a book, but it was to promote her business. And and she's made relationships with people at the big newspaper in the States. I don't know, national something or anyway, she has those relationships. So when she sees an article that's been written and they didn't ask her for a comment, she can reach out to them and say, hey, don't forget about me. And then and that's a PR. She did PR actually. And it lasts a long time, longer, like it's not, even though you might do two months or four months, the outcome can have lots of residual effects, right? Like you can see more traffic coming to you over time because those things in the digital space last forever, potentially, right? The Mm -hmm. things you're doing. I think it's fascinating. I think what you do is fascinating and I'm excited that you help businesses and help people learn. Now, tell me a little bit about your book because we're slowly running out of time. I could talk to you forever about this, but uh, tell me about your book and what's going on with you now. What are you doing? My book is known as The Powerful Publicity Prescription, and it essentially leads readers through everything from why is PR powerful from a historical context, all the way into why mindset is powerful and how that influences your strategy into goal planning and then into the individual pieces of building a successful campaign. So I even go into like tools that you can use to help build a media kit easier. These are tools that can help you save time and energy on building a media list. And then I even get into, okay, you have all your media coverage going live How are we going to stay consistent with that? How are you going to promote these things? And the reason why I wrote the book is because I had a lot of people come in my audience and also clients as well coming to me and saying, following you on social media and getting your tips is great. What I'm not getting on a daily basis is the entire picture, right? There isn't something I can just open 
that will lead me through all the different parts of a strategy that I can refer back to. So I thought, okay, let's this writing a book is a great way to give them that information, pack it full of actionable tips in each area. I have real world case studies and examples taken from my own client campaigns and what their results were. And awesome. I think it's a book that can help a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of nonprofit associations. And currently what I'm doing is I'm actually running my crowdfunding campaign for the book, not just to get it published and out there in the world. I'm also doing a companion workbook and a glossary as well. I saw that. I'm too. excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm jumping in there. I went through your crowdfunding page and we'll share that um, in the comments, but mm -hmm. I'm going to sign up because there's a lot of bonuses in there and the workbook. I was pretty excited to, to read about it. it. You're a good writer. I was captured, I have to say, in reading through it and understanding <laughs> what you're doing. So I am excited to jump on board. Of course, I closed out the page before I went through the transaction part because I'm going back. So when we share the link, I'm sure myself and some other people will probably go check that out. Now, when does your crowdfunding campaign and what do people get if they sign up? It is ending the end of July. And right now in term, it depends on the types of perks that you're getting. You could grab an ebook copy of the book. You could grab a copy of the book as well as the workbook and the glossary. I'm going to be doing signed print copies. I'm also offering coaching sessions. Uh, and for the folks that run associations in that, I'm also doing webinars and workshops. But I also really wanted to use this campaign to give back. So my plan is also to donate books to nonprofits in need that are struggling with their marketing and PR strategy for everybody that, you know, helps me share and amplify the campaign. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I'm also going to be gifting four scholarships to entrepreneurs who need help with their PR strategies. And that scholarship is going to give them entry into my monthly membership club known as build your media influence. And it's my plan when I launch that mo monthly membership club to have things like private one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching, they'll have access to workshops, resources, and to me as well as each other to really get into the nitty gritty of building their own PR campaigns and having that personalized support piece there too. Oh, interesting. That sounds great. Ah. I'm going to go check it out again. Now, my headphones are dying. I'm not sure what they're doing. They're doing something weird. They're new-ish, so they get finicky. But that is neither here nor there. Just if I don't, if I'm like, I can't hear you. That's why. And if somebody was going to try to get a hold of you and learn more about your offers and services, would they go to inretrospectwritingservices.com? Or is there another place we would send them? Yeah. They could absolutely go to my website or I'm always active on Instagram, Lillian Sue Copywriter PR. They can always head there. I'm always active on there as well. And they could also on, on the website, just send me an email as well. Okay, perfect. And uh, oh, I can't wait. I wish I had a copy of your book, but I will be sending this out to a couple of people I know actually who I think could utilize your book. I do work with one specific nonprofit that might really appreciate the information. Maybe I'll even buy it for them. That's so exciting. And if you had one tip or piece of advice for somebody getting into PR or somebody wanting to do PR for themselves, what would that piece of advice be? I would say be prepared to take your time when it comes to brainstorming and planning your strategy. PR is not a flash in the pan, I'm going to spend five bucks and get results right away. It is very much a long-term strategy. And as we talked about earlier, the results of which can continue paying dividends for your business months, if not years down the road. Even for myself, I have 
podcasts that I did 12 to 18 months ago that people are still finding me off of because they listened to that episode. So keeping in mind that it's very much a long-term strategy that you can keep using to keep your brand and your projects top of mind. But in order to do that, to start off with, you have to take your time when it comes to planning your goals, get specific and get introspective on what your story is, why it matters and who you want to share it with. Ah, okay. That's good. That's great advice. I love it. All right. So that's it for today, guys. For everyone, I use guys. I know. I shouldn't. I got to work on that. Anyway, we will see you next time. This is the new series. Great conversations with exceptional people. Lillian, you are an exceptional person, just so you know. And I really appreciate working <laughs> alongside you in the various ways we get to collaborate. So I can't wait to chat more offline and everybody else will see you guys soon bye uh, don't worry i'll be cutting things how do i guess i don't stop recording we're just recording until because yeah that's it how was that okay <laughs> yeah good. Uh, can yeah you that was good send me your logo would you send me your logo because I will put that on sure. as well. And this will be published probably in the next three weeks, I'm hoping. That's my plan. And it's going to be on the podcast, mm -hmm. YouTube channel, Facebook group, business, Facebook page, maybe LinkedIn. And we'll tag you. So I'll okay. get your IG account and we have your website and get your logo. And then we're golden. Oh, and it'll be on our website too, I believe. Sounds good. Yeah. I really thank you for doing this. This is cool. And send me the hey, link. Hey, I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Send me the link to your to the book again. The crowdfunding okay. page. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. I'm going to end it and then I'm going to go to my next meeting. You have a good day. Thanks.